In this video, I'm gonna send three boxes of the same Pokemon cards through FedEx, UPS, and USPS to see which company damages my cards the most. Here's the kicker though, and please don't get mad at me, this is for science. It's a science experiment! I'm not gonna include any bubble wrap or paper or anything in there that would keep the cards from shifting around when being shipped across the country. All I'm gonna include are some single Pokemon cards, a pack of Pokemon cards, and I'm also gonna include an Apple AirTag so I can track exactly where these packages are at any given moment in time. I'm gonna be shipping all three of these boxes to a mystery Pokemon YouTuber. Who's that Pokemon? On the other side of the United States, who's gonna assess the damage for us and see exactly what happens. Also, make sure you stick around to the end because our mystery Poketuber has a little surprise for you. Yes, you watching this video right now. So make sure you watch all the way through. Now you might be wondering, well, Pat, why are you doing this? This sounds ridiculous. Well. Let me show you what happened. I purchased a collection box that was missing from my collection and it came absolutely damaged. The package had been wrecked. I have no idea what the package company was doing. And the box inside, well, it also was damaged too. And even the giant jumbo card inside, the Dark Sylveon had some really bad creases in it. And I was definitely, definitely upset about this. Luckily, no hits inside the packs. I was gonna film an entire video about that, but I figured, you know what? I wanna do something a little bit more constructive, something where we can learn something and really understand, well, which of these companies should I be shipping through and sort of what happens along the way? Now, let me show you exactly what we're sending inside these boxes. All right, we have a Doug Trio from Evolutions in a card saver. I wanna test various kinds of card protectors during this experiment too. We also have a Rattata in a top loader, and I'm a little worried about the top loader because sometimes the cards can move around and maybe even slip out sometimes. Now a Starmie, this will put in just a penny sleeve. And then finally, the meme of the channel, Frostless. I'm so sorry, Frostless you get no protection. All these cards were basically in perfect condition. And yeah, we're including a pack of Evolving Skies in each of these as well. And finally, before we close this up, I'm gonna include an Apple AirTag in each package. These are great little devices that allow you to track where in the world something is just on an app on your phone. And although these are all going to the same spot, I'm curious to see how they get there and which one might get there first. And also, is there anything weird that happens during shipping? We'll see. All you have to do is take this little plastic thingy out. It automatically connects to your phone. And we're gonna name this one FedEx. We'll do the same for the others. And then tape them in the box with bubble wrap so the air tags themselves don't cause damage to the cards. This is an absolutely ridiculous experiment. Obviously, you should never ship cards like this. But again, we're here for science. Yes, science! We just wanna see which company takes better care of these cards. Looking at my phone, yep, there they are. Right here in my home in San Diego, California. Let's load them up in the car, ship them out and make sure you stick around to the end so we can see what happens. I shipped each of these out on the same Saturday and I asked each carrier for their cheapest shipping option. And here's what the total was. For a half pound 12 by nine by four box, the United States Postal Service charged me for first class $6.25 for a Wednesday arrival. That's four days later. UPS charged me $12.15 for ground residential. That's almost double the price for a Friday delivery. That's six days later. And then FedEx, the most expensive charged me for FedEx ground $19.25 for again, a Friday or six day delivery. It's kind of surprising. The cheapest option gets their first, but is it worth the savings? We're gonna see. All right, so each day after I shipped, I was checking to see the progress on the air tags of the packages and they all didn't go the same route. Something funny really happened. Literally the next day, USPS was already 844 miles away, chilling at the Denver International Airport, obviously it hitched a ride on a plane, while FedEx seemed to be on a truck 146 miles away and UPS, well, it was literally where I dropped it off. It hadn't moved at all yet. The day after that, the United States Postal Service that package was already in its destination city. It was just chilling out a warehouse, just waiting to get dropped off. FedEx was in Oklahoma, in the middle of the country, 1,120 miles away, stopping for lunch at Panda Express or something. And UPS, it hadn't even moved yet. The next day, FedEx was hanging in Philadelphia. UPS finally was on the move somewhere just north of San Diego. And when Wednesday came around, USPS was delivered, which was pretty cool. FedEx was close behind and UPS was just about 80 miles north of where I live with just two days left to go. It's kind of crazy. It was at this time that FedEx seemed to stall in a warehouse, probably waiting to be delivered on the Friday as promised. And UPS was coming in through Chicago, probably on a truck that finally left the day before. And then finally on that Friday as promised, USPS having gotten there a couple days earlier, all the packages arrived at their destination. But in what condition? I'm actually really nervous and excited to sort of see what happened. And we just got a video back from our mystery guest who had taken the time to film themselves opening these boxes and assessing the damage, if any, that was inside. So let's not wait any longer. Let's go check out the video. All right, Pat, I got it from here for a little while. Um, I got your boxes in the mail and I don't know, I'm kind of scared. Um, it sounds like they're possibly 
uh, I don't want to say things are destroyed, but I just I know things are flying around in there. And <laughs> I, it, I'm handling it as carefully as I can, although. I don't know. I feel like FedEx might have thrown it out the back of the truck, but we'll see. All right, so this is our first box. This one's from USPS, and they all came in in pretty decent shape. I mean, there's nothing, like, too damaged on them at all. All right, so there's some tape or something ripped right there. I think that's where we pulled off the postage just so we didn't see each other's addresses on video and stuff. Nothing was literally, like, crushed, so that's a good thing. USPS actually got to me the fastest which was actually really surprising i feel like usps is usually the slowest um and i think it was actually first class mail which is like the slowest uh version of usps mail that you could get so i was surprised it got here so fast like days before some of the other ones um uh, okay so here we go um okay i don't want to cause any more damage to these but it looks yo look at these cards are like floating they're probably connected to the tape or, or something from the uh, air tags, but it just looks like a jumbled mess in there. That's, and I don't know, it looks like some of the cards are missing, which, I don't know, we'll see. Like, okay, there's some tape action going on in here. I did not realize that. So let's pull out some of this. So this was the card that was, it looks like it was in the card saver one. Um, honestly, this looks good. I don't think that there's any damage. It's a little dusty, you know, from being in the box, but... I don't think like the it looks good. I don't see anything that looks bent. Um, I'll pull the card out of here too and just take a closer look at it. But yeah, this looks really good. I mean, obviously I didn't see it beforehand, but I can tell you I don't see any whitening on this one and it looked totally fine. Yeah, so the Doug Trio card saver, I'm believing that all the card savers, unless some of the packages were mangled, are gonna be just fine. This is why I always ship with card savers every time I ship out to any of you for any of the giveaways. Um, I'm a little bit worried about the others though. Let's see. So first impression, um, with the top loader, Shifting. it is kind of the cards pushed up a little bit. That happens sometimes um, during transit because it, it comes out, it, it slides out easier. See, it could just that could just literally slide out. I don't normally send things in top loaders, but this is obviously this is for the experiment. But uh, that can happen, so that's something you got to watch out for. Um, oh wait, is there? Is that, is that more cards? There they are. <laughs> Uh, it looks like they went behind the flap there. Um, so next time we do this, which there's not going to be next time, um, we'll tape those flaps down, but yeah. <laughs> oh, dude, no. <laughs> oh, no. We do have an Evolving Skies pack in here as well. Um, let's check this pack out. Uh, so we got the tape on here. I'm not sure what, what uh, the tape looked like before. Yeah, the tape was in there pretty secure when we put them in. We put them in on the sort of bottom corner. I don't know how they sort of got dislodged. There must have been some movement going on for sure, but anyway. But it, it, yeah, it's there. Okay. So I'm not, I'm trying not to mess this pack up at all. It looks fine, to be honest with you guys. It looks fine. Um, but yeah, yeah let, let's crack it up just to see. I mean, you never know. It could be something crazy in here too. Um, we'll see how the cards look inside the pack. But oh, nice. We got a green and white, white code, code card. card. So that's. <laughs> Always a good sign here. Um, I don't know, you know, some of the corners on these actually are. You see that? They actually yeah, I mean, obviously we didn't open the packs before we sent them, so it's hard to tell whether that's factory made or because of all the rumbling and shifting inside, but probably factory if it's sort of that bad. Well, we got a Fluffy, nice. All right, so we're going through some packs here. We're gonna see, you know, maybe we get something in this box, in this crazy box. There could be something crazy in this pack. All right, rubber gloves reverse. Oh, not bad. Actually, actually a V-card in there. Trevor not okay. V-card hit. Looks to be pretty much 100% fine. Survived with no bubble wrap. But now the thing that I almost didn't see, and I think it's something. Oh, no, it is cars. They went under the flap. Yo, actually, Fossilous. the flap could have actually maybe saved them. I don't know. Um, oh, so one is in a sleeve, and one is just... Oh, that one's just loose. So I guess we'll start off with this one next. The penny-sleeved Starmy, which... Okay, this one's a little bit more risky. I don't know, maybe maybe going in there under that actually saved these cards. Um, this one looks pretty solid. I mean, there's a little speck of whitening up there, barely noticeable. Um, I don't know if that's just dust. Yeah, I think I was literally just dust on there. Yeah, the dust was not there before for sure. So that must have gotten in there during the rumbling and jumbling. And overall, it looks pretty solid. Star me, I think you survived, buddy. And now the frostless... Uh, is sleeveless right here so let's see how the oh okay so i'm gonna assume that wasn't there previously we got a corner ding 
on the back top left. We got another corner ding on the top right. Um, the bottom does have some as well. So I'm seeing some whitening there. And then on this corner, maybe a tiny bit. Yeah, the Frostless definitely got damaged during shipping. Obviously, no protection at all, not even a penny sleeve. It's pretty amazing how just a penny sleeve can do so much uh, as far as protecting the cards during shipping. And again, this is a ridiculous experiment, which hopefully you would never ship or receive shipping quite like this. Now, let's check out that hollow. Uh, do we have scratching? Um, it's hard to tell. It looks pretty good. I'm going to hit it with different angles here just to, in case I can't see it. Maybe Frostless you guys can. Frostless does not can. look happy, by the way. All right, now let's drop the S on USPS, and we're going to make it UPS. So this is the UPS package. Same with this one. I mean, it looks fine. There's no, like, kind of insanely, like, damaged areas on the box. Boxes definitely look a little scuffed. You can see that it's a little black on the sides. There's probably brushing up against the side of a truck or maybe the bottom of a truck or something. Um, it was definitely clean white before, so... Has been moving around, that's for sure. It seems like this is the little hangout spot, though, for our cards that don't have sleeves. And actually, even the ones with sleeves are in there. Oh, but this one's not. Uh-oh. Well, the air tag came out of the plastic, actually. So our Frostless right here is a loose card. This one's not in that little slot. So maybe we'll start with this one first. Um, quickly looking at the front here. For some reason, these cards just aren't getting scratched up on the front, unless I'm not seeing it. Um, but they, it looks good. There's a little bit on the top of Frostless's head. It looked like some sort of mark of some kind. So that definitely wasn't there when we sent the cards to Rev. So it is getting damaged on the front, I think. But let's check out the back. Back's a different story. Again, um, I'd assume this stuff wasn't on here before. You got dust from the box, obviously. But then you have whitening on that corner. And you have whitening on that corner pretty bad. Um, you actually have some edge wear on this one. So that's actually really beat up on the bottom there. That looks really... Uh, that, this one really took a hit. Yeah, that's pretty bad. Okay. Uh, so next in here, I do have the Evolving Skies pack just because it's sitting here. And we're going to see if the, <laughs> that those guys made it through uh, hiding under there. The hidey spot. The hidey spot is where they <laughs> hang out. All right. So we got an Evolving Skies pack. Yeah, the pack looks fine on the outside. Let's see how the cards look on the inside. Um, again, it's kind of hard to tell if this is... You know what? I don't know. See, the corners are definitely have some stuff going on. That looks kind of like they, that actually looks like they got beat up. Okay, that looks pretty bad. It almost makes me believe that this was happening during transit. Just loose packs banging around in there. The corners obviously are going to take more of the hits. So, yeah, that's that's not good. Maybe there's something. Well, we got a green code card, so it's probably nothing too crazy. I'll tell you reverse and a wishy wishy washy non hollow. Let's keep exploring in here. Um, we do have our top loader. I'm sorry, our card saver, Doug Trio. Same thing. Pretty dusty. It's pretty. It's a pretty dusty top uh, top loader, but uh, it looks pretty good. And we're gonna keep exploring in this box. Now we have our Star Me that uh, just was in a penny sleeve. And okay, let's let's see here. Penny sleeved Star You definitely has some stuff going on. Top corner there has quite a bit of uh, fraying. and Yeah, it looks like there's like a little piece of hair or something sticking out of the top right-hand corner there. Uh, definitely got beat up in there more than the other one. And then there's our boy, Ratata. Okay, this one in the top loader. Um, again, pretty dusty on the top loader, but hey, it's there to protect it. Protect our Ratataz. Okay, let's take this out and see how we're looking on it. Um, let's check the back. So back does have some edge wear on the top, on the corners. That's pretty bad. I guarantee you that was not there when we sent those cards. So again, the top loader is something. It can move and shift from side to side. And depending on the angles, it can really start drilling into that corner. We tested this once before with shaking cards and the corners were always getting scuffed up before the edges were. You can check out that video if you want. We'll have it in the card over here as well as in the description. Yeah, the top loader is not looking very good. Again, there's a lot of wiggle room in there and that's just... That's just not okay when you're shipping. Not too bad, but the one that really got hit on UPS was going to be that card that was not in a penny sleeve. That card was hit bad. All right, and last up, Sorry, we process. do have FedEx. Same thing with this. Ooh, that looks banged up right there, FedEx. Uh, that definitely was not there when we shipped it, that little crease there. This box doesn't look bad. I mean, there's a little crease there. Um, Could have been pushed in a little bit there. This is the one I'm going to say I'm probably the most curious about. Um, for some reason, I feel like I always hear or see something about FedEx 
um, kind of like throwing boxes all over the place. Most expensive one that we shipped out, by the way. But we're going to see what happens with this one. What do you guys think is going to happen with FedEx? I'm, I'm very curious. I'm very curious. Okay, let's crack this open and... Oh, okay. Oh, no, 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 no. oh okay. There's something. Something's happening. Uh, <laughs> this, this looks different. This looks a lot different than the others. Those ones are hanging on for their life at the top. And I could tell you that... Oh, there's some other stuff slipping out. I could tell you that, uh, that, that card that is not in a penny sleeve or anything does look like it has something happening. We're going to find out. You guys just stay up there for a minute. Maybe we'll start with you. <laughs> Um, so here's our star me. This is the one that's just in a regular sleeve. Um, let's check it out. We're going to take it out of here just to get a better look at it. Uh, it's actually not not too bad. I mean, it does have a little bit of whitening up there. Overall, edges look pretty decent. I mean, corners look okay. There's definitely less whitening on this one. Then our boy Ratata. Okay. Um, Ratata is looking pretty good. All right, let's check this out. We're going to take it right out of the sleeve here. The front is usually looking pretty fine, um, but it's the back with those blue borders where you can really see if there's whitening. And it does look like there is a little scratching there. I don't know if that was there before. Corners. But, yeah, okay, this is interesting. This card does have scratches. Definitely looks scratched up, which is weird because this was pack fresh, but also it was in a penny sleeve inside of a top loader. So... I don't know what happened. It's on the back. You guys can see that quite a bit. Um, I don't. Again, I don't know if those were there before or what, but definitely has whitening. It also has a bend there, too. Uh, this one looks pretty... Th this looks like probably the worst Rattata that yeah, we've seen today. I would today. say the same. It just has a lot of stuff going on with it. Okay, uh, <laughs> let's uh, let's get these out. So I'm just going to... I'm sorry, Rev. I know this kind of hurts because okay, Rev so ships landing. stuff out all the time. Oh, dude. Okay, hold on a second. <laughs> uh, what is going on with that card saver? This is why I was very curious about FedEx. Uh, the Rattata looks like a, something happened. I don't know what happened to Rattata. Uh, these cards are hanging up there. This top loader is actually missing Ooh. part of it. <laughs> and it's skewed too. Look at the look at how far off the Doug trios are. Is it in there? Let's see. Uh, okay. There's our evolving sky. Maybe it was sent like this? Interesting. Because I don't. I feel like I've never seen a, a card saver with um, like just part of it missing like that. But maybe it was like that before. I don't know. So let's check out our Doug Trio here. Uh, well, better the card saver than the actual card though, right? Um, it is off. Uh, if you guys notice, it's all the way to the right. So that's that's something I don't know if that was like that before. I don't think it was. But let's check it out. See how we're looking here. Um, okay, so looking at the back. Whitening on the top right. Top left looks pretty good, though. Um, edges look good. This one actually doesn't look too bad at all. Yeah, card saver for the win. pretty solid. This Frostless, um, I, I think, might be the worst one. It, already starting with the front... There's some issues there. You can see a crease. The back looked pretty bad. Ooh. Uh, we Ooh. Okay. Definitely scuffed up. A little dusty, but a lot of a lot of whitening happening. I see a scratch over the over here on the right hand side. Yeah, it has some edge wear there. That corner is pretty bad. It even has a bend. Um, mm. Not too bad on the bottom. That edge is really bad. Actually, yeah. That. Whoa. Hold on. That that right there. That's really bad on that one. Definitely the worst of the three. They all have a lot of wear. Although the USPS one was pretty bad on the bottom, if I recall, with that edge wear. Okay, so we have our Evolving Skies back out of here. Um, it's hard to tell if anything really happened with the, the packs. Uh, since, you know, it, it, it's a pack. It's, it, it has flexibility. Like, you know, you, you can you can hit it around like that, and it's, it's not really going to show up. But what could show up is the cards inside if they were thrown around a ton. But let's see here. We got a green and white code card. Nice. Let's go through and see our corners really quick. Same thing on these. They definitely have a little stuff going on. It's hard to tell if that's from the package getting thrown around or what. But let's go um, four from the back to the front, and let's see if we get something out of this last pack here. Okay. Wobbuffet. Hop it. Swablu. Lilligant Reverse. 
Oh, we do. Okay. We got a Kyurem Hollow. Not bad. So now you guys saw how those cards came in without bubble wrap and everything like that. Not definitely nowhere near ideal way to ship things out. I'm actually going to show you guys how I ship things out. To start it off, um, I do have a, I have a handful of different things. So first off, this is going to be a Gem Mint 9.5 Rocket Zapdos. So I sometimes send out some PSA cards. I know you might send out some back at PSA CGC cards. Uh, this will be good to know because... We want to make sure they're still in good condition. I mean, obviously, these ones especially because they're authenticated, they're graded. We'll see how Rev does it. And actually, all the items that you guys see here, Pat, if you want to give these away to your community, you're more than welcome to. I'm going to send these out to you guys. <laughs> okay, this I did not expect. Rev said he was going to throw some stuff in. I thought he was just going to demonstrate with this, but apparently this and everything you're about to see, uh, we're going to give away at the end of this video. Uh, thank you, Rev. I appreciate you. That is way beyond what I had. I thought you were just going to send some packs and maybe some singles or something, but a 9.5 Zapdos from 1998, Gym 2. Thank you, man. I appreciate you. The community appreciates you. Make sure to subscribe to Poke Rev if you haven't already. Uh, most likely you already are, but if not, make sure to do that and stick around to the end so I can tell you exactly how you can win these and everything else you're about to see. Uh, but this is a Gem Mint 9.5, and there's all the subgrades there. And so basically, how I start off with a card like this, uh, step one, I'm going to put it into one of these bags here just to protect the card. So these are self-sealing, and then just like this, we're good to go. Okay, so first item is going to be like that, just to protect the actual case and everything like that. But then the next step is I'm going to put it into this self-sealing bubble uh, mailer type thing. It just goes in like that. It's really easy. I try to make things as simple as I can while I'm packing up things and then it just seals up like that um, for our first item. Second item I have is going to be a diamond and pearl base set booster pack. So I'm going to throw in one of these as well. But basically what I do with booster packs is I grab a top loader. These can be used for more than just putting a card in them. I put the top loader behind this and it actually keeps um, this really nice here. And then I grab uh, these bags, and these are normally for PSA cards, but they fit perfectly like this. They seal, and then I just bend, I just fold it right down to the top of that pack, and then voila. Uh, you got your own sort of like custom uh, pack protectors right here. Same thing with this one. It goes right into one of these bubble mailer things. They have these in all different sizes. I think this is like a triple zero size, I think it's called. I'm not sure exactly, but there's the, you, you see so many different sizes for these. But this works out perfectly for this as well. I'm going to put that there. Um, and then the final thing is I have a bunch of these celebrations cards. I got the birthday Pikachu, Mew hey. EX, Zekrom, and Reshiram Full Arts from the black and white era. But basically, I use Thank card you, saver Rev. ones just like Pat. And I basically just put them all in here. These are good because you can't shake them out like a top loader. So it's perfect for shipping cards as long as you keep them flat in a way where they can't get bent. Because obviously top loaders are better if, uh, you know, obviously you can bend that really easily. But I make sure that th that's not going to happen. Put Zekrom in. And then we're going to put our Reshiram in. And here's our four cards. What I'm going to do is put it in another one of these bags here. Four is probably the max you can get into one of these bags. Like that, just to kind of protect them a little bit more and then i'm gonna put it into another one of you guessed it <laughs> the bubble mailers so it's gonna go in like that so now i have these three bubble mailers but we're gonna protect it even more so this right here is actually a cardboard box it's like a multi-level box i don't know the exact name but you have all these little uh indentations here so you we'll put links down below for all this stuff i get these from uline.com I'll share with you all the equipment and all the other things that Rev's using because I use the same thing when I ship the way I'm supposed to ship. Uh, so all the links in the description below. And again, stick around to the end. I'll tell you how to win all this stuff. You can actually have it exactly how you want to have it, like height-wise and everything, which is perfect because it fits if you just want to have one of these. Um, if you want to have two, if you want to have three, it probably fits even more than that. So all you do is bend this up, and then you kind of just line it up. So it looks like we're going to be on this third level here. And it's like a perfect fit every time. It's good for packs, graded cards, kind of go like that. And then we do this last one like that. And see, it's like a perfect fit. Then we just grab our tape and just 
like that. That is the way that I do it. I like that because it's a snug fit. There's not really much room for those things inside to move around. That's obviously a big mistake with the way that I just shipped for this experiment. Too much room, too much airspace. You have things moving around like crazy here. Inside those little bubble mailers, inside of this, those things aren't going anywhere. So unless this thing gets smashed almost purposefully, your cards are gonna be protected. I love it. Well, yeah, I'm gonna throw it back to you, Pat. Thank you uh, so much for having me on the channel. I really appreciate it. Awesome. So yeah, PokeRev, thank you so much for collaborating and also showing us exactly how we should be shipping these things. And like he said, there's many different ways to do it. Just protect your stuff when you're shipping it out because you don't want to deal with the hassle of returns or people being upset. And also it's the right thing to do, right? So don't ship like me, ship like PokeRev taught us. And again, thank you for the collaboration. Make sure to check out PokeRev if you haven't already. Now my conclusion is that, well, number one, I'm pretty disappointed with FedEx being the most expensive uh, and it didn't get there earliest. It also was the one that had the most damage. You know, I would say that that's pretty much in last place here. Then I would actually say it's UPS and then USPS taking the first spot. Although the USPS, um, you know, got there earlier and it was actually the cheapest. With any of these, if you ship them properly, then you're likely not gonna have to worry about damage. But you know, UPS, USPS were pretty similar in terms of the damage that we got back. FedEx, the box was a little bit mangled, not quite as mangled as the box I got in the beginning, uh, which was actually shipped via USPS. So again, it's a little bit of a gamble when you go with these different places. But again, as long as you properly package these things and don't give enough wiggle room in there for things to move around, you should be okay and best of luck to you and all your shipping as you move forward. And now, thanks to the power of editing, we're gonna fast forward in time and check out the package that PokeRev sent us. All right, we got the package from PokeRev and interestingly enough, it looks like it was kind of damaged on the right-hand side here, as you can see, but that's okay because we know that he packed it the right way. I tracked all these things all the way in. They came in all at the same time through the air tags. Let's open it up. Inside the bubble mailer here, we have the cards that we sent him so we could examine them, but we don't need to do that. We saw those already and we got the air tags in there as well. We got the Diamond and Pearl base set pack go into a lucky winner. We have some of the hot pulls from the recent 25th anniversary celebration set from Pokemon. And then finally, that amazing 9.5 Beckett Zapdos from Gym 2 from Japan, 1998. That's awesome. All right, again, big shout out to Rev. I got the giveaway items right here, all looking real, real nice, especially that Beckett 9.5. Three winners, in order to enter to win, I need you to do two things. Number one, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And number two, make sure to comment below. And this is simple. All you need to do is comment below this video and say, happy holidays. Just wish the entire community happy holidays. I wish you a happy holidays. And I'm gonna award the three winners, randomly drawn from the comments, one entry per person on December 6th. That's a big day for me, because that's my birthday. So December 6th, I'll draw the winners. I'll mention the winners in the community post at Deep Pocket Monster YouTube channel and also a pinned comment down below as well. So yay, happy birthday to me. Happy holidays to you, wishing you the best. Peace out, good luck. I'll see you in the next one.